and God quoting to you what he said. The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. In other words, God gives you a lot in the word that you can stand on. But there is a total difference when suddenly he quotes it to you. Amen. And when he quotes it to you, that brings faith up in you. And so I want to say that to you because I believe that God wants to quote his word to you all the time. And uh, I believe we should be quoting his word to him all the time and standing on it. But when he quotes it to you, it will change your life. You catching that? Did anybody get that? Yes. Uh, Homer was looking at me like I would, I'd come out of a Sputnik. It was like... All right, so I'm just going to tell you, as this one, people online are watching, you cannot heckle when we're online. Because if you do, they don't hear you, they hear our response to you. And we minister to people all over the world, you just don't know it. Uh, some of them are from Australia, some of them from uh, Europe, some of them are from, uh, different parts of Europe. Sometimes we get people from Africa. And so it's really important that this part is very important to you. Amen? So you had the joy of being here, they had the joy of listening. So, you know, I'm always asking the Lord where I should read from. Because uh, if you're as old as me, you've read the Bible a lot. And, uh, you know, you say, well, I've read this, I read that, I read that recently. And Lord, what have you got to say now? And I suddenly felt quickened by the Lord to read the book of Ruth. Now, the book of Ruth is only four chapters long. But I'm about to give you a revelation from it. So I read the first two chapters and then I read the second two chapters. By the time I'd finished the second chapter, I am weeping. Because here is a woman, and I'm going to read some verses to you, but here is a woman who leaves her land, leaves her country, goes to a country where she's an alien, and then has to literally reap from someone else's harvest because she has nothing. But because of the way she lives... She ends up getting given an inheritance in that land and becomes the, the, the literal mother of the grandfather of David as the result of what she did. And it, and it struck me and I began to weep and I said, Lord, that you did that to me. You brought me from another land. I reaped the edges of what someone else had done and then you gave me my own field and my own inheritance. But it's how she got it and how you can get it. You see... When you look up the name Ruth, the name Ruth means in the original language, friend. Or friendship. In other words, I'm about to tell you that what you make friends with will make a difference to your life. She's actually a Moabite, and a Moabite was a cursed nation. Because they literally were birthed out of incest. So she's come from a cursed nation, and it actually tells us in Deuteronomy 23 that Moabites shouldn't even go into the sanctuary. Yet this person, because she made friends with the right person and made the right decision to be friends with the right things, changes the course of her destiny, and she gets involved not only of, of, of David coming, but of Jesus coming. Just because she makes friendship with the right thing. So I'm just going to read a couple of verses to you, okay? So I'm going to read to you from Ruth 1, and I'm going to read to you from verse 14 and to 16. Then they lifted up their voices and wept again. And Oprah, not Oprah, Oprah, kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clung to her. And she said, look, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. Return after your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, entreat me not to leave you or to turn back from following after you. For, whatever, for wherever you go, I will go. And whether, wherever you lodge, I will lodge. Your people will be my people and your God will be my God. Isn't that interesting? Then you get into chapter 2. I'm just going to read a couple of verses. So Ruth, the, the, chapter 2, verse 2. So Ruth the Moabite said to Naomi, Please let me go to the field and glean heads of grain after him whose sight I might find favor or grace. And she said to her, Go, my daughter. Get into verse uh, 12 and 13. I'm going to just paraphrase it. 
suddenly Boaz turns up and, and literally gives her favor. And she said, why did I get favor? And he said, the Lord literally repay your work and reward you for what you have done to your mother-in-law. Everybody has found out what you did, all right? And, and it just goes on like that. So quite simply, she made a decision to befriend somebody. But it was who she befriended. Because Naomi means delight. So she befriended someone who was the Lord's delight. She made a choice to cling to someone and to be one with someone and to make friends with someone who was the Lord's delight. And the Lord delights in a lot of things. You know, it tells us in Psalm 37 that, you know, if we delight ourselves, verse 4, in the, in the Lord, He will grant the, des the desires of our hearts. So if we delight us in God, you will get God's delight. You're catching that? So if you delight yourself in God, you'll get God's delight. If you get God's delight, you watch what happens. Secondly, he delighted in his son. He said, this is my beloved son in, in Matthew 3, uh, 16 and 17. He said, this is my beloved son in whom I will please, in whom I delight. All right? So if you, you make friends with the son of God and really make friends with him, you will find you delight the Lord because you made a friend of one he, he delights in. It also tells us in Psalm 1, you need not sit with some of the people you're sitting with. You need not be making friends with those who scorn and mock. You need to make friends with people who delight in the things of God. And it says, whose delight is in the Word. That one is like a tree planted by the waterside. So when you delight in the Word of God and you remove yourselves from the mockers, I, I don't want to hang out with mockers. I don't want to hang out with people that mock the Word of God or mock worship or mock preachers because what they're saying to God is, I don't like what you delight in. Very, very dangerous. So remove yourself and, and find yourself delighting in the Word of God, looking for the Word of God and delighting when it speaks to you. All right? Then you'll find God's delight. You're making friends with things that make God delight in you. I haven't got long on this because I've got so much more. You also need to make friends with those who've got the favor of God. Abraham was told in, in Genesis 12, listen, I'm going to bless you, and whoever blesses you will be blessed. And whoever curses you will be cursed. In other words, I delight in you. You're my friend. It tells that in Isaiah 41. You're my friend. So therefore, if you're my friend, I delight in you. So you find out that whom God delights in and make friends with them. Because the overflow of God's delight on them will then overflow into your life. Yeah. You're catching it. So quite simply, she makes friends with one whom God delights in. She makes a choice that I see God's delight. I see who you are. I'm going to cling to you. I'm going to be friends with you. I'm going to make friends with what you do. Where you go, I go. Where you live, I live. What you do, I do. Even if it's to a foreign country. Even to its, if it's to a people that I don't even know, I will go there because I see God's delight in you and I want to be friends with that. It is so powerful because she, she makes a friend and she makes a covenant with the one that God delights in. But, but it's really interesting. She must have seen something on Naomi apart from the favor of God. She must have seen destiny. To leave your own country, to not go back to your own people, but to say, I'm going to go with, I, I see the purpose of God for my life. I see the purpose of God for my, for my literal descendants that are coming from you. I'm going to chase and make friends with my destiny. I'm not going to try and make friends with my, my own riches. I want to make friends with what God has for me that will change the destiny of my children. See, I've always believed that if you, will, if you will give yourself to the Lord, you'll affect your children. Oh, they might have a wobbly. They might, might, they might be all this, we don't want that. But if you, I mean, I went to prayer this week over some things and I could feel something go off in the spirit as I began to pray. And the Lord weighed in on me and I said, Lord, I'm your servant and your word says that a good man, and you've told me I'm a good man, you've told me a good man will leave an inheritance to his children's children. And everybody's thinking about money. I'm not thinking about money, Lord. I'm thinking about the thing that I made friends with. I made friends with the things of the kingdom. Therefore, I'm expecting you to keep your word. Yes, Lord. Yes. Are you not hearing me? 
See, she made friends with something, not just a person, but she made friends with a purpose. She made friends with a destiny. What is the, the point of fooling around with all that you want to do? What, is, what a waste. You see, a sister-in-law said, okay, I love you, you're a great person, but I'm going back, and I'm going to live my, my life back where I came from. Whereas Ruth said, no, I'm going to make friends with the destiny that sits on your life, and I'll walk, I don't care what it costs me, I don't care who I have to meet, I'm going to walk into my purpose and my destiny. Now, I cry out, you know, watching and hear, I cry out, young people, don't play the game of the young people. Don't follow your friends who are always telling you they're right. I, I, I had friends at school. Christine hung with a, a, a crazy group of people at school. But after you find the Lord and find your real destiny, you find those friends are gone. You're all thinking, I'll lose my friends. I'll just tell you right now, you will. You'll lose them because they get married. You'll lose them because they've got their eyes on something else. You'll lose them because suddenly they've gone somewhere else. Folks, stop playing that game. Say, my God, why was I birthed on this, on the, on this world? What is the destiny for my life? Yeah. Not what pleases me. Right. What pleases you? Right. I'm not going back to easy street, she says. I'll cling to you and go where you go because I know there's a purpose on you and I've got to follow that purpose. And part of her purpose, you'll find in a couple of minutes, is that she served her. And when you find something that God has his hand on in your destiny, stop waiting for someone else to serve it. My Lord. So always everybody else thinks it's someone else's job to serve. And I'll just sit back and wait for the overflow. I, won't, I don't want to wait for the overflow. I want to be the overflow. I know this group here, I, you know, I'm really preaching to the choir. You're all going, yeah, I had that down. I've, I've walked that my whole life. Yeah, I've noticed. But everything that you make friends with makes a difference to you. And I, I must keep my friendship with my destiny. Now, we jump from chapter 1 to chapter 2 because she's now come home. And when we get to chapter 2, because of her heart, and we'll get there in a second, because of her heart, she literally says to her mother-in-law, hey, can I go and reap from the corners of the fields and see if I can find favor with anyone? Now, there's two things there. Number one, she understood the Bible without having read it because she was a Moabitess. But clearly, Naomi must have told us something. Because in Leviticus in chapter 19, verses 9 and 10, it says, when you have a harvest, you do not pick over the harvest. You leave the edges of your harvest. I want you to leave the, the overflow of your harvest so if any alien comes in, if any person from another country comes in, if anyone that's poor comes in, they can walk around that field and they can pick the edges of the field and they can reap from your harvest. So somehow she knew this and she said to her mother-in-law who she had decided literally to serve she said can I go and get something for us in other words not have I just followed you into your destiny but I want to bless you with my service I want to help you for my understanding I have a right to reap from the harvest of others now you need to make friends with that see if God blesses anyone around you he doesn't bless them for themselves he blesses them to be a blessing. So if you make friends with the harvest that God is bringing on anybody else's life, and you walk around that, you can reap from what God is doing from someone else, and it might make you be able to plant something for yourselves. You see, she could have made friends with poverty. She could have made friends with nothingism. She could have said, you know, we've come here, there's nothing. I'm just going to make friends with poverty. I'm going to stand on the street corner and I'm going to beg. But instead of that, she didn't make friends with her poverty. She said, I'm going to go and do what the Bible says and I'm guaranteeing that I can get enough for me and you. You're catching this. She then also made friends with something else. She said, I'm going to find anyone that will have favor on me. In other words, she said, I'm going to make friends with the favor of God. I'm going to live under the favor of God. I'm going to find out where the favor of God is. I'm going to find out who carries the favor of God. 
I want to find out who walks in the favor of God. I want to be around somebody, somebody that has the favor of God. I'm going to look for it. I, I just need to find the favor of God. And in the original, it says grace. And when Boaz turns up, isn't it funny that she found herself in the right field? Because it says a good man, his steps are ordered by the Lord. And she'd made a good decision. She'd become a friend of the person of destiny and delight. And so she found herself in the right field. She didn't find herself in the wrong field because if she'd been in the wrong field, it said she would have been harmed. She got herself in the right field because God directed her to the right field because her heart was to find favor. So she wanted favor. So by the Spirit, he led her into the right field and she started collecting around someone that was a kinsman redeemer. And he, she literally says, why have I found grace in your eyes? Really, why? Because you were looking for it. If you're looking to find favor, you've got to get me. Stop making friendship with the wrong things. Start making friendship with the right things. God wants favor. Abraham asked for favor. Moses asked for favor. Uh, Gideon asked for favor. Why? Because he understood if you touch favor, you have everything. So you look for people of favor. You reap from something that someone in favor is doing. And then when Boaz turns up, and it's too long to read, Boaz turns up and, and he brings her in and he says, don't, don't you go out there, you stay with me. She said, why are you doing that to me? And then it, he literally answers her and he says, because I found out everybody in town knows that you have come to honor your mother-in-law. Everybody knows who you are. You see, she made friendship with honor. I want to tell you, a lot of people won't do it. She made friendship with honor. She was prepared to risk her own life to get some food for her mother-in-law. And in the next chapter, when her mother-in-law says, I want you to take a risk, I want to, I want to find a husband for you, she literally could have lost her reputation. But she had made friendship with honor. And when Boaz found out wh who it was that was in the field, he said, oh, no, I know who you are. All my servants know who you are. The whole town knows you. She just walked in. But she'd made friendship with honor. Have you made friendship with honor? I mean, one person says yes, or another one's nodding, but only God knows if you have. Because honor will do things to honor another one. Honor will do things to honor one that stands in favor. Honor will stop bad-mouthing people. Honor will not listen to lies. Honor will not listen to someone speaking evil of the person that you're trying to honor. You'll have none of it. There's a great thing. I mean, Christine used to work for, for many years for QVC. And, and, you know, once or twice she just got someone ranting at her. And I said, why didn't you just put the phone down? She said, well, the problem is they're always listening. QVC is always listening. But, you know, you can do it. I give you permission. The next person that calls you to dishonor someone that you are trying to honor, press that button. I'm sorry, I lost the call. I am not listening to you talk to me and infiltrate and make me a friend of your bad mouth. The next time, I mean, really, it'll get into the polit political field. It'll get into every field. Because when you make friendship with honor, you want to act as a person of honor. It means I'm a friend of honor. <laughs> you see, I got a lot of you because we don't realize how dishonorable we are. We listen to junk. We read junk. We make comments on things we should not make comments. Walk away. I mean, they say, you know, if you fight and walk away, you'll live to fight another day. But don't join in things that are dishonorable. Don't join in the gossip mongers. Don't join in the backbiters. And the Holy Spirit is going to start telling me who you're listening to. It, you will wear it on your face. Because dishonor will gain dishonor. And when you're a friend of dishonor, you will become dishonorable. And you can't walk in the favor of the harvest of the, of the ones that carry God's favor because you're walking in dishonor. And you'll put a stain on the field. 
And to make friends with honor is a choice. Anybody can cry like the two of them did when mother-in-law's leaving. Anyone can try, can cry in an emotional moment. Anyone can cry when, when the word convicts us or the presence of God turns up. But decisions of honor are made. Yes, we can honorably respond, but it's your decision. How you treat the worship leader is your decision. How you treat the word of God is your decision. If you treat the word with dishonor, you treat the, the one that gave the word with dishonor, he doesn't believe you. You say, well, can you get, the, the, we, we were good till this moment. We don't like this subject. Well, I'm just going to stay on it. Because it's so easy in our world to fall into the realm of dishonor. I'm telling you, you've got to hear the word of the Lord. Walk away. Don't listen to it. Don't answer it. Don't speak on it. Don't you join those who mock. Become an honorable person. And Boaz turns to us and says, we know who you are. You're a person of honor. He literally says to her in the next chapter, and we're going to jump there real quick. He says to her in the next chapter, what you just did to come to an old man honorably, put your head by his feet and honorably say, will you redeem me? You, you were so honorable. You didn't go for the rich. You didn't go for the young. You went in honor. Do you know why? Because her mother-in-law told her where to go. And she'd so given herself to her mother-in-law that she went with her mother-in-law. I mean, come on, you, you, you're all American. I'm Americanized. I decided not to change the accent. I can mimic anything. So I could mimic your accent, but I decided to keep my accent. And I decided, decided not to drink iced tea. There's just two things I won't do. All right? That's all. But you know that the worst sin of America is the one sin that we boast about. Independence. Nobody will tell me what to do. Oh, yes, they will. I dare you to drive down this road. Don't stop at the stop sign. Go through the stop sign over there at 80 miles an hour and someone will tell you what to do. In fact, someone will help you. That's just a police officer. But there is one greater than the police officer. There'll be a judge. But then there's one greater than the judge. The judge. Who watches every. You can't say to God, you can't tell me where to go to church. In fact, you can't tell me to even go to church. I've heard it all. And while you're doing it, God says, dishonor. They don't even honor my desires. They won't go where I send them. They won't fellowship with whom I want them to. They won't let me train them into their destiny. They're so busy being dishonorable that they will miss their whole destiny. Now, I'm on it because it was her honor that made her make every decision. She chose to be a friend of honor. Now, you've got to choose to be a friend of honor. I look, some of you are looking at, if you carry on this, I'm going to walk out, you dishonorable what's it? You would, wouldn't you? And then I'll call you out as you go, and I'll get a word on you. And you would say, that's dishonorable, but who started it? I'm only going to the restroom for 30 minutes. I'm telling you, what, what I'm on right now, I believe that because we've not made friendship with honor, we have missed some of the destinies of God. Boaz hears about it and changes his whole attitude. All the servants don't go near her. She's a Moabitess. They're a cursed people. Yet because of her honor, she is brought into the fold. Now, it gets really interesting when you go into chapter 3 and 4. Because in chapter 3... Naomi, the delight, says to her, listen, I, you've been such a blessing to me. I want to make sure that that which I have, I have an inheritance. I want you, I want you, Ruth, you outsider. 
I want you who comes from another nation. I want you because of the honor and because of the friendship you've given me. I want to make sure that you have my inheritance. So she said, this is what you're going to do. I want you to go to Boaz because it's his field you went into. I want you to wait till they finish the threshing. I want you to to wait till they finish the, 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 the little party they have concerning it. Then I want you to go up to him. I want you to lay by his feet. I don't want you to do anything immoral. I want you to lay by his feet. And when he wakes up, this is what I want you to say. Cover me. Oh, cover me. Extend the border of your mantle over me. For you are my nearest kinsman. Cover me. Cover me. Give me the inheritance of the one that befriended the delight of your life. I want to befriend my inheritance. I want what you have for me. I want to be a friend of it. I'll risk my reputation for it. I'll risk my name for it. I'll do anything to have the inheritance that you have for me because that you see we need to stop living so selfish see everything i gain other people gain because of me everything you gain you'll affect everyone that's why the lord said to abraham everything you see is not just yours it's your children's and your children's children You're gaining something. You should want to become friends with your inheritance. You should be pushing in on God and saying, I want that which you have for me. You're my kinsman redeemer, Lord. You've redeemed me. Now what comes with this redemption? What comes with what you've brought me into? What do you have for me to have? I'm going to make friends with it. Wow. See, that should should be the the cry of our heart. I want what you have for me. Holy Spirit, I want you to show it to me. I want to see it. I want to have it. I want to possess it. Put the border of your man's. I want to come under the full covering of what you have. When he wakes up and he finds her there and she has the conversation, I love what he does. He said, you have been so honorable. And you so want your inheritance. I don't want you to go out of this place with a bad reputation. So I want you to sneak out before the light comes. But I promise, because you've pushed it, I'm going to make sure that the day does not go by until you have your inheritance. He said, by the way, give me your shawl. She opens a shawl and he gives her six measures, which is the measure of man. He gives us six measures and she comes back with the deposit, with the deposit of her inheritance. She goes back, she shows it to her mother-in-law. She said, what did he say? She said, I promise you, I promise you, he will not rest until you have your inheritance. Now, if I were to, wanted to give you a history lesson, it would be really fun to, to tell you what happens next, where he goes to the gate of the city and he waits for the a higher kinsman redeemer, one nearer to the land. And he offers to him, do you, do you want to Emelech's uh, land? Do you want to buy it? Do you want to redeem it? He said, yeah, I don't mind. He said, yeah, but with it you get, you get Ruth. And so he answers like a lot of us answer, yeah, but that might mess up what I plan for my own life. So he says, now, did you just say that? I've got 10 elders here. He said, take the sandal off. Take my sandal off. He said, now we're going to make covenant. He said, you don't want it. I want it. Boaz just walked into what she had just done. As she literally walked into it. Do you know what Boaz means? It means a pillar. And it was the name of one of the pillars at Solomon's temple. So one who is a pillar in society, one who is a pillar, literally takes his sandal off and makes a covenant says, she's mine and she's got all of mine. Now chapter 4 just gets really exciting. Because in chapter 4, 
He then marries her and it literally uses these words, the Lord opens her womb. You, you, I can read it to you if you want me to. It says, and the Lord opened her womb. Wow, wow, wow. He said, I'll give her her inheritance because she has made friends with my delight. She's made friends with my favor. She's made friends literally and covenant with one that I want to be blessed. So I'm going to give her a blessing. I'm going to put it from Boaz into her womb. Not knowing that three generations down, David's going to turn up. Not knowing that Jesus would become the son of David. She entered into the inheritance of Jesus. All because she made friends. Now, I wanted to read this to you because it's so beautiful. All right? So Boaz took... Ruth, verse 13, and became his wife. And when he went to her, the Lord gave her conception and she bore a son. Then the women said to Naomi, Blessed be the Lord who has not left you this day without a close relative, and may his name be famous in Israel. <laughs> you had no idea. And may he be to you, Naomi, a restorer of life, a nourisher of your old age, for your daughter-in-law who loves you, who is better to you than seven sons, has borne him. Wow, will that open your eyes? In other words, God can give you someone that a natural son won't even do, and he'll give you a spiritual son or a spiritual daughter who will do something for you that nobody else would have because of their friendship with the purpose of God in you. I mean, this is brilliant. I, I'm only really teaching it like softly, but the life of it, all right, the life of it. Then Naomi took the child and laid him on her bosom and began to nurse him. Ruth gave her son to her mother-in-law to look after. She gained the inheritance, but because she had made a covenant with Ruth, she, so with Naomi, she said, I'm going to share what I have gained with you. This is not just my son, this is your son. Well, that doesn't sound like a normal person, all right? Then Naomi took the child and laid him on her bosom, and it, then it says in the next verse, and also the neighbor women came, gave him a name, saying, there is a son born to Naomi. I thought Ruth had the son, but Ruth wants to share the son. There is a son born to Naomi, and they called his name Obed. He is the father of Jesse, who is the father of David. And then it goes on, and it gives you the genealogy. And it's the most fantastic thing. So when she has made friends with inheritance, she says, I've gained my inheritance because in the initial I made friends with your delight. I made friends with your purpose. I made friends with your favor. I made friends with your honor. And now you've caused me to have an inheritance in this land. I'm now giving him back to the one that I made friends with. So Naomi, all she had to do was be who she was. But Ruth made friends with her. And Naomi brought her to her own. And then Naomi has her inheritance released back because of someone that made friendship with who she was. I'm, I'm feeling the Holy Spirit all over me. I'm telling you, some of you have missed it. Some of you who haven't even had natural children, you need to be saying, Lord, where is that one to me? See, we're always about the natural, but if God chooses to give you a spiritual or chooses to give you a roof, why not? But let's start with being roof ourselves. Let's start with clinging to what is of God. Let's start clinging to the Lord's delight. Let's start clinging and giving ourselves to honor, honor, honor. Folks, it was Joshua's honor of Moses that caused Joshua to become the leader of Israel. And meet the same angel of the Lord. It was Timothy's honor to Paul that made him the pastor of 80,000 people. Woo! 
But it was all in this choice. I'm going to make friends with a thing that will change my future. And I'm going to cast off the thing that will stop it because there is an inheritance. And I believe that when we do the will of God, despite our feelings and despite our cost, if you keep telling God how costly it was, he'll send you back. But if you'll embrace it, he'll draw you in. And he'll give you and he'll give me an inheritance in a land that is not our own. In something that we didn't pay for. In something that we didn't sow for. Because we made friends with the right thing. Are you catching this word? And I pray it gets you. Younger ones, I pray it gets you. Wouldn't it be awesome to stand next to a man of favor? Because of the favor that God has given you. And God sends a man of favor into your life. You don't have to marry some twerp. Don't look for the best looking. Look for the one with the greatest favor sitting all over them. And wouldn't it be awesome if a man of favor lets you into their field and gives you a job? You don't know. All you got to do is make the decisions. I'm going to be in friends with that that belongs to the Lord. And I'm not going to let go of the things of God. I'm going to hang on. Lord, if the ride is rough, it means it's going to be rough for purpose. Because somewhere there's a Boaz. Somewhere there's a field. Somewhere there's a threshing floor. Somewhere it's the smell of wine. Somewhere there's something that God has for me. Because I've made the right decision. So this is how I want to finish it. I pray it wasn't too deep, was it? It wasn't too convicting about the dishonor. Because if it was good. Um, so I remember when I first got saved, I want to say this to you. I came off the street and nobody on the street honored anybody. It was always the person trying to get to the top and they would do anything to get there. And when I came into the church, I didn't realize I, I, I brought that in with me. And I started acting dishonorably. And I remember the Lord waking me up at 2 o'clock in the morning and telling me to shut my mouth. Because he showed me, if you carry on like this, you'll have nothing. And suddenly I had to make these choices to become friends. I had to drop my, my worldly friends. They weren't good for me. And I want to tell you this, not all my Christian friends were good for me. Because bad, bad company corrupts good character. But when I, make, when I make a decision to be a friend of that which is of God and to cling, the doors are there. You have no idea what God might do next. Just to add to what I said to you, and you're sitting back there, so I'll get you too. I've watched girls who love Jesus marry a twerp because they had to be married. And I've watched them dragged into the gutter and controlled instead of standing and saying lord i have made friends with you where is the one for me where is the sign of god on that man yeah but i want him to be a hunk god knows what a hunk looks like come on you can be a hunk and an idiot all at once but what about a man that is sent like boaz because of your decision I'm feeling the Holy Ghost all over this thing. I'm feeling, I'm feeling the Holy Ghost all over this thing. Have you made a decision to make friends with the thing that matters to God? Come on, stand up where you are and say, my God, I'm making decisions right now. Some of you might say, I'm never coming back again. <laughs> Don't make that dumb, dumb decision. Say, Lord, I, I want to be confronted into the things of God. And this is how I want to finish it. I just want to finish it like this. If Ruth from a cursed nation can walk into the destiny of Israel and be in the line of Jesus, what can we be? Because of the choices that we make. I, I'm going to start like this. Father, I want to say it with me, Father, I want to be a friend of yours. I want it to be said in heaven, that's Dennis, my friend. You getting that? Not, you're not supposed to say Dennis, you're supposed to say Chris or Kristen. <laughs> Let's try that again. I'm, I'm for you agreeing with me, but could you put you into the middle of it? 
So put your own name in. Lord, I want to be known as your friend in heaven and on earth. Oh, my God. Lord, I want you to show me those who have favor on their lives. And Lord, I will give myself to being around them. Lord, I want to be a friend of honor. I want to be a friend of favor. I want the destiny that you have. I want to be a friend of your purpose. I want great grace to actually be great grace, not pathetic grace. Oh, kinsman redeemer, throw that border of your mantle on me. Throw it on this church. Oh, God. You've got to remember this as Paul is walking through Derby and Lystra. The people said, there's a young man here. He's different. He's made a friend of the purposes of God. And Paul says, give him to me. And Boaz grabs Timothy. Oh, God. And one thing I've, I've cried out for him in my later life, give me sons. Christine is crying the same. Give me daughters. Give me people to touch. So that that which I gain, they can have. And then they will affect me. Now, if you feel the Holy Spirit, it might just be me. But if you feel him, I want you to yield to him. Say to the Lord, I'm sorry for saying it's been a waste of time. Say, no, I'm making friends. Chris said to me today about the word ruthless. It means a person who refuses to be friends with. But I want to be a roof. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I don't want it just for me. I want it for this house. I want it for my daughter, Sasha. I want it for my daughter, Hannah. I know there's a guy. I know there is. I know he's there. As she's given herself to serve again. Lord, I thank you that you, the kinsman redeemer, want to open her in there. Give my granddaughter a daddy, Lord. People in this room whose natural kids at the moment aren't walking where, oh, give them sons and daughters. Oh, God. God, open doors of favor for you, children of God. Make friends with it. The Holy Spirit is sitting in here, guys. This is about destiny, isn't it? This isn't about a moment or a touch of God. This is about destiny. Josiah, you remember me prophesying over you? You did because you embarrassed you, I remember it. You remember me prophesying because of the choices you had made, what God was going to do in your life? Was that, was that a true prophecy? It is, isn't it? Can I give you another part? God's got a suddenly for you. And it's going to be quite shocking to you. And it's to do with a partner that he has for you. And it's because of the decisions that you've made in your life that God can entrust someone to you because of who you are becoming. You need to hear him. Now, you say, well, why Josiah? I don't know. I just listen to God. I don't. I don't know, Sarah, what it's about. I don't know, I don't know anything about your family. I've never sat and talked to you. But I know there's pain in your heart. I get near you. And I, I felt the Lord tell me to tell you that there's some turnarounds coming. Listen to me. He says, I've counted Sarah faithful. Her prayers are held up before me like a sweet-smelling savor. I've been watching her giving. I've been watching the pain. And sometimes even the thoughts that came against you, they were horrible. Almost suicidal. 
the Lord says, I'm going to give you a turnaround. And it might shock you what it will be and who it will be with. Come on, son. I'm only using my gift. What about you? Go on, throw your, throw your, your shawl on someone. <laughs> Go on, drop it on them and say, hey, I got something to give because of who you are. There's something good. There's something good coming out of your family. I just looked at you. I saw your daughters in the spirit. And there's something good coming out of your family. Quite, quite amazing. Even, even one that has caused you great pain. I feel the Holy Spirit all over me. Because you see, he's counted you as faithful. Can you press in for a second? God of heaven. Now listen to these words as I try to close. He's our kinsman redeemer. Which means he will come on behalf of us and redeem things for us that we lost. Things that were taken our kinsman redeemer will get them back. He'll sit in the gate of the city and fight for us. Hallelujah. You know, Hannah Rhodes, you've been on my heart all day. And you've got to understand, I don't put people on my heart. I think about people and pray for them. But all day you've been on my heart and, and, and all day I felt like a heavy touch of God about you and your family. I don't mean just this family. I mean your extended family. And I want to prophesy to you as a prophet that the Lord is going to put his finger into the middle of that which has literally felt like a curse on your family. He's going to put his finger on it. And I believe he's going to stir that finger and break the judgments and break the spirit that has tried to destroy quite a few of your family. And all you need to do is, Hannah, lift your hands and say, Lord, I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm going with you, Lord. My kinsman redeemer. I want to prove this to you. You got one minute. At the beginning of the year, I prophesied that there would be some inheritances unexpected. Did not know that one of the people was my own wife. Her father died at 52. He couldn't leave an inheritance. He died. He just, you know, the only inheritance he left is he found God and the rest of us did because of him. That's not bad. Suddenly, his last surviving sister, we didn't even know she was alive, died this year and sent, sent someone to try to find out where Christine was so that the sister could leave an inheritance on behalf of her brother to Christine. You getting this? Because she made friends <laughs> with the purposes of God. It's almost like you want, to, you want to walk out and embrace him. Hallelujah. 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 I don't know what this means, Aaron. You can just rebuke me afterwards. It's fine. But you can't rebuke an older man, so I suppose you can't do it. But the Lord said, some of the blessing on your life, you actually weren't the one that did it. He said, stuff has been sown on your behalf way back there. And there was a sowing in prayer back there that literally was held for you. And now the Lord says, I want you to do the same on behalf of those coming. For you are going to affect the destiny of others because the destiny of you was affected by that which was done before you. I don't know if you knew how much your father-in-law prayed. 
You don't know. He prayed. And I'm going to tell you something. He's still in heaven praying. I can hear him. He never left this church. Come on, you've got to reach out for this stuff. Oh, God, I love you. Who are you going to make friends with? Who are you going to make friends with? Hey, Joseph, back there. The Lord says, stop despairing. Don't despair. The Lord's already told you he's got your case in his hand. And all you can see is your faults and he can see your heart. Don't despair. The Lord's seen the good that you've done. Seen the decisions you've made. Seen the honor that you have, have extended, even contrary to feeling. Don't despair. Hear the word of the Lord. Don't despair. Because God will suddenly bring a longing of your heart to fulfillment. You've got more writing to do, son. The Holy Spirit fill the atmosphere as we get ready to go. close me so um, I'm glad he asked me to close for once <laughs> usually I don't like doing it because it feels like you're having to put the brakes on but um, as I was standing over there how, how many of y'all and this, this is going to be a learning session right here how many of you understand that sometimes when the word is ministered and ministry starts you can feel the Holy Spirit come in the atmosphere and own the thing how many of y'all know what I'm talking about if you don't you're experiencing it right now just so you know <laughs> Okay, but but I felt the Lord kind of prod my heart a little bit and say, yeah, I've come to own this word. Now you need to ask me to own it in you. And so let's do that as we end tonight, as we go out of here. Holy Spirit, own this word in me. Lord, not just in the atmosphere, in my life. Own this word, the word of honor, the word of friendship. Lord, the, the word of choices that make destiny happen. Own it inside of me tonight. So just right where you're at, you just pray that with him. Make it deeply personal. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So we thank you, precious Spirit of God, for sealing us with this word, where it is branded into our very spirit and soul and mind and heart. And we receive it in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Guys, we bless you tonight. Have a fantastic night, okay? And uh, we'll be back here Saturday morning. Bless you guys.